morning. So I'm beyond six months so far. It's kind of funny because we went and saw this movie called Death, Happy Death Day. And it's kind of a takeoff on Groundhog Day. And they have special meaning to me because that's kind of like what it is here, you know. Wake up. It's a different day, but basically the same. Area, um, beautiful preserve, public beach, protected area, pond, trails, deer, turkeys, mink, muskrats, and everything. And so it's my job to make sure that the place stays intact. Throughout the season, it sees eight to 10,000 visitors. And, and if you, and if people stop just say, looking at things from their viewpoint, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I can believe totally that the vast majority of the people that watch my videos are very responsible people and they're not gonna do silly things, you know, and damaging if they were here, but there is that percentage of people that would. And so my goal is to have percentage that equals zero of damage, injuries, um, encroaching into the protected areas. Doesn't work out that way. Comes pretty close to zero. Sometimes I think it's just a matter of sheer willpower, you know, where people come in here and, and if they don't understand, then they have to understand that they're in my universe and they have to follow my rules and it's resulted in some conflicts from time to time, but you know, you, you get over worrying about conflicts as long as you're successful in protecting the area. But anyway, enough of that. And I had a couple really good questions, responses to um, previous videos. The first one I'm going to talk about, hello Nut Thrower, and thank you for being a valued member of our tribe. In regards to the viscosity of the glue in how I approached this paddle bow here, and it was, it was a very thin, thin glue. Now think about this. You can have a mixture of hide glue or sinew glue or probably fish bladder glue that would remain liquid um, in, in, a, in a temperature if you lived in a place like Palm Springs, it's 115 degrees, but if you move to an area where it's 70 degrees, it would congeal. And so when I'm talking about using a layer or a viscosity of, of glue, that I used on this bow, it was just at that point that it would congeal if it, it dipped below 70 degrees. And so to, to avoid from overcomplicating things is this, the mixture that I used for this bow to back it was the viscosity that it would remain liquid above 70 degrees at Fahrenheit and then congeal below. And so it would be a different mixture in Palm Springs in the summertime than here than say um, Manitoba. If you used that Palm Springs mixture and wanted to do the same type of process in Manitoba, <laughs> then you you could just literally set your um, your container, your, your Ziploc bag or whatever you use next to a fire. And I found out that a 70 degree mixture worked out fabulously in this one. And so this one, would I give up using a hot plate and dried sinew to sinew back bows? No. All this is is a, an alternate method. I will probably use it again, but I would have to say even though it's fun, I will still use the hot plate, thicker mixture, standard method of sinew backing bows. Although, you know, if you're into sinew backing and you do it more than once it's not just like I want to have a bow and I'm going to build a bow and do this and it'll be my primary bow you don't mix it up experiment a little bit worked out well you could do a combination of things you wouldn't have to put the hide glue in your mouth and like lick the back of the bow to size it you could certainly just take a thicker mixture and size it um, there is no one way to do it as long as you're successful you're fine the next one, extremely important, and it's funny because I did, and I'm going to entitle this something in regards to the alchemy of bows. Um, give me a break. Thank you. Thank you. Because I was discussing crystallizing some substance into the belly of the bow or the entire bow to increase the compressional strength of that material 
And mostly I was thinking of white cedar because it is a very low compressive strength wood. Although the English, I believe, use this method too on their heavier war bow. So it's all relative. You know, a 40 pound white cedar bow is probably facing the same challenges as if this was made out of, say, witch elm or something else at a higher poundage. Now, give me a break, brought up something called malming. I may have heard of this at one time in my life, but you really like drove this forward as far as taking a pine resin, infusing it into a turpentine or something like that, some kind of a solvent, and creating this mixture that when you paint it on the belly of a bow, that pine resin is gonna harden and it's gonna give it com better compressive strength, malming. If there's any malmists out there, please, anybody experienced in, in malming, please contribute to this because I am a newbie. I am a neophyte in the process of malming. This white cedar bow could definitely use something like that. I'll have to do it after I tiller it. One limb is a little stiffer than the other. It's looking like, yes, this one's a little stiffer. So I'm going to have to tiller it carefully before I do that. But I'm going to malm this pine resin and give me a break, talk about how he did it. It was over the process of, uh, uh, of time to be able to put that pine resin into a solution then paint it on the belly of the bow. Give me a break. Also mentioned um, that what you're doing is you're approaching it just on the belly. You're not filling the bow with heavy, dense pine resin. You're basically just affecting the belly so it's not going to affect the weight, the mass of the bow, affect the speed of the bow that much. And so malming. I am requesting that, if, again, if there's any malmists out there, malmicizers, please, please feel free to comment, give your methods. This is going to be so cool. Definitely, I'm going to enter this in the, the bow of the month, Primitive Archer, because <laughs> it's kind of a funny bow. Um, as far as the process, as far as the process. With that, I better eat something because I'm, town is packed. We're at the peak of the, the fall colors, and so it's um, high traffic. It's a high traffic time of year. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. And uh, have a wonderful day. <laughs> oh, PBs here, Thunderbird. Finish them up. This one has the lining on the on the TBs. This one I have to do the line work around that. Then I'll be ready for the Helmsman Spar Urethane. Then I have the third one that I have to dig through my records because a person found it and requested it as a Christmas present. An older design that I have, and I I don't have any pictures. Hopefully on my Facebook I've got a picture of it because he wanted it exactly and I don't really remember how I did it. <laughs> Enough of that. Enough chatter. I better eat my Dinty Moore beef stew. Have a great day.